We are not responsible for your behaviour. We believe in common sense. No, 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 no crisis, no. You're listening to News Talk on Strange But True Radio, episode 13 of 2022, with Philip Jones and Philip Keeler. On tonight's show, in the US, officials involved in the Texas primary school massacre say the gunman was in the building for an hour before law enforcement went in. And in the UK, Prime Minister Boris Johnson says he takes full responsibility into the number 10 lockdown parties as the Sue Gray report is released. This is News Talk on Strange But True Radio, your roundup of the biggest news stories of the world, downloadable wherever you get your podcasts from. Here's what's happening around the globe. In Russia, dictator Vladimir Putin has been visiting soldiers wounded during his illegal war in Ukraine. He was photographed shaking hands with medics and patients at the Mandrik Military Clinical Hospital in the capital, Moscow. So far, almost 30,000 Russian troops have been killed. Across the world, monkeypox is spreading. The United Arab Emirates has become the first Gulf state to record a case. The Czech Republic and Slovenia also reported their first cases this week. They all join 18 other countries to detect the virus outside its usual Africa base. To India now, a court has sentenced senior Kashmiri separatist leader Yazin Malik to life imprisonment. He was found guilty of participating in and funding terrorist acts and involvement in criminal conspiracy. And in Spain, officials there have relaxed entry rules to Britons who are unvaccinated against COVID-19. Visitors will have to show either COVID vaccination certificates or a negative PCR test. To our top story tonight, in the US, officials involved in the Texas primary school massacre say the gunman was in the building for an hour before law enforcement went in. 21 people were killed, including 19 children and two teachers. 17 other people were also injured in the attack. One of the victim's dads wanted to charge into the school with other parents when they found out that police were still waiting for the go-ahead. Uh, Phil, this is an incredibly sad story uh, to hit America, especially uh, with children so young. It, it, it's, it, it, it's just very, very sad. Um, wh- wh- why, do we, why do we think it took the police so long to act? That's a really good question. I don't know. I mean, this is small town America. I think it's about 15,000 people who live there. So it's really, I, I, I just can't tell. I mean, the police don't like using guns. If you think about it, if you're just a guy who, go, who lives in a very, who lives in a very sleepy town, sorry about that, who lives in a very sleepy town and somebody starts shooting, the last thing you want to do is go and confront him and get involved in a gun battle. Yeah. Emotionally, would you want to do that? No. If you knew... If you've never done it before, if you lived in a sleepy town and there's a shooting going on, would you want to get involved? No. Go and risk your life? No. But that said, the guy who actually, um, it may be because there was a security guard who went in, apparently, without backup and killed the guy who who killed the 18-year-old who did the shooting, the mass shooting. So um, probably that could be why, because if he was dead already, then... um, they wouldn't necessarily rush to go in there. Okay. Could okay. be that. I mean, it's crazy to me. To it's crazy to me that the guns 
in America are still so readily available. People in the US and other Western countries have this, you know, we have the same conversation each time this happens as well. When we have a massacre on this scale, um, you know, we're always calling for, for the gun laws to change. Why, why is something not done about the amount of guns being so accessible to, to civilians? Well, because guns are very, very popular in the United States. There's um, 120 guns per 120, for, per 100 people. So there's, you know, there are so many millions of guns in the United States, it's unbelievable. I think there's 400 million guns actually in, operational over there. Well, that's what they say. There's probably 390 million guns in circulation in the United States of America. But historically... When the, col- the colonials moved across the country, they needed the guns, as far as they were concerned, to defend themselves. Often, they believed from the, they made out that they needed the guns to defend themselves from the indigenous populations. But in truth, I think they needed the guns to defend themselves from each other, because they, the especially as you went the further west you went. I mean, there was a lot of violence in the domination of the United States. There was no sovereign state overlooking the United States post-1776. So they didn't, that, that, that's a sovereign in power uh, creates a certain stability. If you don't have a sovereign, the a society is less stable. So when Britain was thrown out in 1776, that created instability in the United States, which meant that the development of the country was very incredibly violent as far as I can tell. I mean, and as they moved further west, they would massacre the indigenous population and by massacring the indigenous population on occasion, in contravention of many agreements that they made, they had uh, the necessity to carry guns to defend themselves, especially in Texas. In Texas was Texas had big problems with uh, raids by um, the indigenous population when the colonials moved in and took over from the Spanish settlers. Texas was Texas was um, Spanish, so seventeen hundreds, I believe it was. It was it was um, Spanish, and then the uh, northern Europeans came over and took over and dominated that part of the world. So the southwest of the United States was gradually infiltrated by Northern Territory, uh, sorry, by um, Northern European colonials who took it from Mexico, which was a Spanish colony. It was all called New Spain up until about 1822 and then it right. became new, new effectively it was all part it was all part of what was a Mexican state always part of a Mexican state That's and right. what was regarded as new Spain and then in eight, up until 1822 and then it became new Mexico it, it was part of Mexico definitively so and then in 1847 the uh, there were wars won by the uh, Northern Europeans who ejected the Mexican rule, and so there's a history of violence and yeah. war dominating that part of the that region of the world in particular. In the other parts of the United States, you know, the distances were huge and lawless, and as such, it was you could be if you were if you were a settler in the massive country, you needed to be able to defend your wife and children because guns of guns of outlook. Uh, sorry, groups of outlaws would roam around and could easily murder and pillage right. right? because there was no police. So the history dictated that you needed a gun to defend yourself. Hence the reason why is in the constitution. However, times have changed and what's happening is they're using antiquated ideology mm. to say their masculinity is determined by the number of the guns they've got in many cases and they say, well, we still need, because their grandfather and their forefathers all said you need a gun to defend, to be able to defend your house against, you know, for, you've got to be able to defend yourself against criminals. So therefore, you must have the right to have a gun. And also, the other thing which the Americans are very aware of is the state. Yeah. So they say the United States of America is a land of freedom. And because it's a land of freedom, the people must be able to group together and defend themselves against oppression from the authorities in the event they want to do so. 
So that's why they want to be able to keep their guns. So if the state starts to turn around and dictate to them what they want to do, as they would suggest is done in socialist countries like Europe, mm. they think that we're oppressed by our governments. They want to be able to rise up against the governments in the event the governments become too dictatorial so that mm. in that way they retain the freedom so they think if you take their guns away then you're taking their freedom away and then any restriction on their ability to own a gun is a restriction on their freedom and their right to freedom is incredibly important what they fail to realize is that guns are made what makes them lose freedom because they are often afraid to go out at night yeah. after the sun's gone down because they're because they don't know what's going on out there but they don't know what's out in the darkness yeah so they tend to stay in i mean if you're in an isolated place and you can't see you you um you don't go out no. because it could be potentially very dangerous that's right i mean in england but our culture's developed over years and years and years without the use of guns. So we are lucky in that respect. We still don't go out. But imagine if you want if you go out in the evening and anybody could be wandering around carrying a gun. Yeah, yeah. That, so that'd be if, scary. If, yeah, it's scary. So when I lived in California when I was really young and when I was older, I used to walk around at night. So I'd walk from my cousin's house to my to where I was living, which was my uncle's house. And I'd walk back at midnight on my own and I'd walk through the small town America. Wow. And so they would say to me, you mustn't walk home on your own. It's too dangerous. And I went, it's okay. I'm not going to worry about that. Mm. So I didn't worry. About it, and I just used to walk home all the time. They thought I was crazy, but I just didn't, didn't concern me. However, a friend of mine called Tim McGuire, who was a great bloke, he was a bit crazy, and um, he went to Mexico and got some small sticks of dynamite. Oh, wow. Mm. And small sticks of dynamite just for fun. I think they were illegal in California. And um, he let one off, and actually I was wearing shorts, and I felt something hit my leg, and the end of the stick of dynamite stuck in my leg, and it's still, I've still got the scar to show this to this oh, day, wow. which I'm quite proud of. Anyway, <laughs> it was a, load, a bit of blood, but not too much. I, anyway, so... Um, Tim was walk was a bit late. He was a bit drunk, and he was walking home. And he let let off a couple of firecrackers at night, which he shouldn't have done. Mm. And some Mexican low riders went past, heard the bangs, and and started shooting at him. Oh wow! So he hid behind a tree. They didn't hit him, but they were shooting at him while he was hiding behind a tree because they heard the firecrackers and they thought it would be a good laugh to shoot at him. Wow. That's what they did. So we don't we don't think about it in the same terms. We just look at it and say, why have they got guns? So another aspect people don't realize is in Hollywood, especially at the time when I was there in the 80s, the it, it, part of gangland inauguration is to shoot someone dead. So they would just have to, in order to be in the gang, you had to murder someone, and they do this by drive-by shooting. Terrible. So they'd be driving and they just shoot someone randomly they didn't know kill him dead and then drive off and they were referred to as drive drive by shootings and it's like a self-perpetuating problem so if, so if you think someone else has a gun then you get a gun to defend yourself and then someone else gets a gun to defend themselves before you know it, everybody's got a gun which is exactly what the situation it's is in america too easy to shoot one off yeah. isn't it here in the UK, yeah, and it actually takes away your freedom. Yeah. They say it gives you freedom. It, re re it removes all your freedom. Yeah, exactly. Here in the UK, we had our own school shooting, um, and that was in nineteen. That was in nineteen ninety six at uh, Dunblane Primary School in Scotland. Uh, Sixteen kids and one teacher were killed in that. Uh, the result afterwards, of course, that uh, there were tighter restrictions on handguns. Uh, schools also looked at safety around the perimeter too. My old primary school in uh, a village called Selsey on the south coast of England, they had this uh, this big gate and, and complex put around the school to make it safe uh, f from from people getting inside. Um, the, our, the UK government acted at that time in 1996 for Dunblane. Uh, the US government 
doesn't act because also it's it, I think it's fearful of gun lobbying groups as well. The, the things like the NFA. Oh, definitely. Yeah, because the NFA is massive in the United States of America, and if you are a politician and you turn around and say, "I want to restrict the use of guns," mm. then you lose a massive vote. Yeah. So you don't. The last thing you want to do is say, "I want to restrict the use of guns." Yeah. Because you want to be elected. I mean, everything's about getting elected, isn't it, in politics these days? It's Being not about popular. what's good for people. It's being popular. So what they need to do is they need to have a meeting in closed doors and unify so that everybody says we're going to restrict mm. gun use. There was a recent massacre where the people, it was proposed, excuse me, it was proposed in the United States that they would put restrictions on um, access to guns so they'd make investigation to the, as to who the people were who wanted to buy the guns. <clears throat> but that was, that wasn't, that wasn't passed in, Congress, it was voted down. So that even after some massacres, they they still refuse to create restriction for the for access to guns. I mean, there's virtually no questions asked when you want to buy a gun in Texas, and they give them away as prizes in in <laughs> prize drawers, yeah. supermarkets, and things like that. Yeah. I mean, people don't realise that in the United States of America. There are. Now, we only hear of one mass shooting occasionally. So a mass shooting is four or more people shot, including the, the perpetrator. Yeah. So in 2021, in 2021, the total was 696 mass shootings. So that's one every, that's two a day, right? In, two, in 2020, it was two a day, pretty 615 mass shootings. In 2019, pre-pandemic, it was much lower. It's 434. And in 2018, it was 323. Now, so far, we're not even halfway through the year. There are 213 mass shootings, which is 10 a week. Wow. Right? So if it's 10 a week, so we're going, we're, we're going for, at uh, the moment, 500 this year. 500 mass shootings. So we, we, we think, wow, there's been a mass shooting. But imagine there's in, in, in 2020 and 2021, there was two mass shootings a day. Terrible. Two a day. So something's, it's not so much take, we can't, I don't think they'll ever be able to take or remove the right to bear arms, but what they could do is put restrictions of access, especially onto automatic weapons. What do you need an automatic weapon for? You don't. <laughs> you don't. You really don't need that. Yeah. <clears throat> there Terrible. you go. All right, this is Strange But True Radio. He's Phil Jones. I'm Phil Keeler. We're going to be talking about Boris Johnson, the party prime minister, right after the break.
get the latest breaking news to your phone right now, just uh, download Twitter. It's a really good social media platform. I love Twitter. Elon Musk has uh, bought it, hasn't he? Let's see what changes will happen there. Um, add us on Twitter using our handle at StrangeBTR. Um, at Strange BTR is our handle. Uh, contact us if you want to get in touch with us, uh, either Phil or I. Uh, studio at strange but true radio.com is the email address. Now, then, in the UK, Prime Minister Boris Johnson says he takes full responsibility into the number 10 lockdown parties as the Sue Gray report is released. In the 60-page document, it details how number 10 officials plan many events in detail, sometimes when other officials warned against them taking place. I'm going to print that uh, 60-page document and stick it by the toilet. It, it will make really good toilet reading if you're, if you're straining, you know. Um, at some of these parties, according to that document, staff were so drunk they had to leave by the back entrance uh, so they were not seen by waiting journalists. So this is a great piece of paper to, to have uh, by your toilet and, uh, you know, be interesting. Phil, is it time for Johnson to, to now quit politics or at least quit as our uh, illustrious prime minister? Yes. Yes, without doubt. I mean, he should have quit. I think he should have quit years ago. I think he should have quit before he started. Mm. I mean, he was sacked. To, he was sacked. I think it was two thousand. and Can't remember when he, it was when he was under Michael Howard. I think in two thousand and four, in the opposition, he was sacked for lying. Then mm. everybody, he was sacked as a journalist for lying. He's known to be a liar. So why did he ever get into a situation where he was prime minister? Yeah. He manipulated. He manipulated Brexit in order to become Prime Minister because he knew that his Bullingdon chum, Cameron, would have to resign if Brexit was successful. Yeah. And he knew if Brexit was successful and Cameron resigned, he had a chance to become Prime Minister, and that's what he did. So rather than think about what the pros and cons of Brexit were, he just went for Brexit because he, that was what he wanted to become, Prime Minister. How does so, he get away with it, though? Because people think he's a character. He's certainly brought people the fun, got a- fun into oh. politics, hasn't he? In what way? I mean, well, I mean... See, there you see, people say exactly what you've said. Forgive me, I don't mean to be... Yeah, you no, know, no, that's fine, that's fine. I mean, I don't really like say, him, but he... People say he's brought fun into politics. He's funny. Well, people oh, say that, but again. how is he funny? He's an idiot. He's just a buffoon. He doesn't comb his hair. He he bumbles around. He doesn't say very... He doesn't say... He never answers questions properly. He has, He's always going... Bah, 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 bah. Because he can't really <laughs> exactly. That's him. Where did you get that? You he actually know. recorded that for the show, didn't he? I think. Yeah, and then we sl- anyway he recorded it. Then we slag him off every week. <laughs> yeah, well, well, it was good of him to do that for us. Anyway, so I just think he's a buffoon, and he's not. He's certainly not a statesman. He's certainly not somebody who should represent the United Kingdom, and he has created huge problems in the economy for his own gain. Yeah. I mean, Brexit is an absolute disaster and yeah. anybody with an ounce of sense would have known that. Sorry, not an ounce of sense. Anybody who is in a position of authority who should be uh, educated in the matter of the European Union should have said, recommended that we don't leave most people found it so complicated they just believe what they were told by Nigel Farage and Boris Johnson in effect and that's caused us huge problems and now we've got this crisis of being of having probably the highest inflation in Europe and that's because of Brexit mm. so if and if we want to alleviate that problem because they're all talking about um, cost of living rise and the problems with the economy. If they want to alleviate that problem, the best thing to do is to negotiate joining the single market again, 
which will stop a multitude of problems and difficulties and enable us to trade more freely and reduce inflation. Yeah. Brexit is, is, is if in effect, inflationary. But there's also other things which are quite interesting about this party gate, which people don't really talk about very much. And that is that on the day of the announcement of party gate was the same day they announced that 50,000 million or 50 billion pounds of contracts were found to have been awarded illegally by the government. Wow. So the good law project took the government to court and said, these contracts worth 50 billion pounds were awarded to various, various companies in contravention of the rules because there are definitely rules that have to apply when you award a, the government award a contract to avoid corruption. They went outside the rules. They were awarded illegally. That's 50 billion pounds. Mm. And that's money's evaporated. We don't know where it's gone. I've written to my MP on several occasions and, and Damien Hines has refused to answer. He says he has, but he hasn't. So he just says he's answered the question, but he hasn't. It's so just, that was just nonsense. That was a distraction. So that was a distraction. And in order for the, the Tories to avoid the issue of 50 billion pounds disappearing. Now they're saying they're going to impose a windfall tax to produce 7 billion. So that's, that's not even, that's like, that's like 14% of what disappeared. So now they want to introduce a windfall tax to, uh, to stop, to alleviate the problems with the energy crisis. Yeah. So imagine if they hadn't stolen 50, well, I can't say they stole it. Imagine if they haven't, if they hadn't robbed us of 50 billion quid. What happens next to uh, to Prime Minister Boris Johnson? What, what's the next step for him after this report? Well, the next step after the report is to for him to face the Party Privileges Committee and if they find that he has deliberately misled Parliament, then he will be forced to resign. So all of his bluster will end finally and do us all a favour. Do us all a favour, Johnson, and resign. He's not. It's not good for Britain to have someone like him in power. It's just not good. No, it's not. And who would be? Who would be stepping in? Do you think would it? Would this cause a, a general election, or just you know a, a reshuffle and and somebody else takes his place in the party? What's happened in the past is we've the Tories have ousted um, Prime Minister in the past. And we've had an unelected prime minister in power. It puts them under pressure to call for an earlier general election, but it doesn't mean they will be forced to have a general election. Mm. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Well, we'll be watching this uh, for you folks and, and tell you about what's happening. Uh, the future of politics in our great uh, nation, uh, or, or not so great nation at the moment, really. Just... Uh, terrible stuff happening and you know this lying and everything that the prime ministers and MP our mps do that they're our figureheads and what does that set for the rest of us mere mortals the public it means that we can do whatever we like down. exactly it filters down through society so other people think it's okay to lie because the government do it's got to stop it must change it's time for change. I'm going to start stealing in Tesco's and say, no, no, I didn't do it. I didn't put that there. What, you've got a Mars bar in your pocket, sir. No, it's not. It's not a Mars bar. There are other supermarkets, Phil. Asda, yeah? Cause, and nick some Asda in Mars <laughs> yeah. bars or something? <laughs> I'm not really going to do that, officer. Not you really. You can't just victimise Tesco's. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, that's it for this edition of Strange But True Radio News Talk for a Mixed Up Generation with Philip Jones and myself, Philip Keeler. Join us each and every Saturday evening for a new podcast to download on trending news stories of the week. Available to download from around 20 hundred hours British time or before. Take care. We are not responsible for your behaviour. 
We believe in common sense. It's about time the 50 billion that disappeared illegally on government contracts was addressed. This needs to be investigated and nothing's being done.